welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked, the series where I talk about every single book on my shelf because it just smelt right. Today I'm talking about P.M. Freestone's The Shadow Scent Duology. Ba -ba -da -ba. Some quick disclaimers before we start is as far as I can remember, because it's been a while, I bought the first book in the series myself when I was on a trip to London for some reason. I can't remember why. And then the second one I believe was gifted to me by a friend. So thank you to that friend. Regardless of where books come from, nobody's paying me to talk about books and all opinions are my own. I'm also gonna keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible. If you would like to go in knowing absolutely nothing, pause the video, go away, read the books. Come back and tell me all about it. The Shadow Scent duology is, unsurprisingly, two books. It is The Darkest Bloom and Crown of Smoke, which were published in, let me check my notes, February 2019 and April 2020, respectively. These are two YA books from Australian author P.M. Freestone. What can be said about this author? What did I dig up in my research? Um, as far as I can tell, she is an Australian author who is based in Edinburgh at the moment. And alongside writing these books, she's also written some short stories for adult SFF. Much like yours truly, she has a background in archeology, span so is clearly a person with impeccable taste. But how is her sense of smell? Ooh, well, these books tell us. Shadow Scent is a series where, I don't know if this will surprise you, uh, the world is very focused on smell and scent. Uh, it's involved in a lot of the magic, it's involved in a lot of daily life. And we follow two characters. We follow Raquel, who wants to use her fragrance skills, she's got an affinity for it I guess, uh, in order to rise through the ranks of this profession and buy her sick father a bit more time. We also have, what was his name? Ash, who is an imperial bodyguard travelling with Prince Nisai who is visiting this land. So we have the, these two characters and they have absolutely nothing in common until Prince Nisai has been poisoned and the two of them are the most likely suspects for the murder. So together they have to set off on an adventure to find the antidote or the ingredients for the antidote that will heal the prince and thus clear their names. Scent based magic is cool. Uh, that's the first thing I've written down in my notes. <laughs> I can't believe that this is the first book I've read that has magic that's to do with scent. In fact I believe I believe there was a 360YA one I read a while back, but I can't remember what it was called and I haven't hung on to it, so I can't remember. That being said, I really liked the way that PM Freestone makes scent such a big focus in this story, in terms of the actions of everyday people and how things are set up in this world. It's clear that scent is a really dominant what's the word? Sense. That's the word I'm looking for. I feel like it's pretty well known in world building at this point, but I always find it really cool when like the curse words and the exclamations are focused in on what your world is shaped by, and in this case those feature scent a lot, so I liked that. It is a slow build, I will say, but I think if you're keen on seeing this two people, unlikely allies, go on an adventure, well that, not that unlikely, but you know, not planning to be allies, go on an adventure and you get to see that adventure from both of their perspectives, particularly in the first book. So we're seeing two sides of a similar story. This might be a win for you if that's something you enjoy, at least the first book will be. I personally find that can really easily lead to the, oh my goodness, just talk to each other feeling when you know exactly that one thing that one character is concerned about is not something that the other character is thinking about at all. It can get a little bit annoying, but I don't remember the series being totally egregious when it came to that. It wasn't the worst offender. If that's something that bothers you a little bit, it'll probably be fine. If that's one of your least favorite things in the entire universe, maybe don't pick this up. I really liked that this was a duology rather than a trilogy. This was, would have been 2019, 2020. So yeah, we would have been about the time that duologies have been quite of the moment, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. It keeps things short and sweet. I personally felt like book one and two were very different from each other in terms of book one being quite a linear adventure and book two feeling a lot more, uh, right, we've got to get everyone sorted and there's a bunch of different moving parts that we need to all fit together within one book. So book two maybe felt a little bit either tacked on or rushed. I can't quite decide what the right word is. I think you could argue that another book would have fleshed out the romantic relationship a little bit more potentially and you could have done a bit more with it. But equally, I'm not a huge fan of YA romance at the moment. So I think that had that been the case, I would have been like, no, three books of two people refusing to talk to each other and having issues, no. Whereas in this case, I think it's, it's just about right. For my part, I don't think it needed a third book. I could maybe take a spin off or like a, I don't know, adventures of scent making kind of book, but I don't, I don't need another book featuring these characters. When I first read The Darkest Bloom, I was in London. I think we must have been going to see Hades Town. That feels like, feels like what we were doing. I can't remember, to be honest, but uh, I picked up the book in probably foils and read it that afternoon because I was 
about four hours early for a meeting with a friend because of who I am as a person. And I remember absolutely loving it. I devoured it in the afternoon. I had a great time, rated it very highly. On a reread, I wasn't as sold. I think a large part of that is because of how my tastes are skewing away from YA at the moment. So take that with what you will. But equally, um, having read them as a pair, I think that book two wasn't amazing enough or a building on book one enough that it made me go, oh yeah, this is a great duology. Book one was great and this is great as a whole. So I have actually made the decision that I was gonna film this video and then I was gonna unhaul these because they were worth talking about. I did enjoy them in the moment, but I don't want to reread them. They're not something I'm gonna to want to pick up for the rest of time. So that is what I'm gonna do. I think if you are a keener bean for YA and YA tropes than I am, I think you might enjoy this. As I say, there's some really unique world building elements in this, it just wasn't for me as a story overall. It's not that I didn't like them, just don't fit in my criteria for keeping books on my shelf and shelf space is a premium in this house. I feel like there are so many YA tropes in the series, I should be able to come up with loads and loads of books to compare it to, but because tropey YA hasn't been something I've been wanting to read lately, I have got rid of quite a lot of them from my shelf. So the only thing I can think of that is similarly a dual point of view kind of story, uh, which I did very much enjoy, is The Tiger at Midnight by Swati Teardala. This is a cat and mouse game. There's some really good stuff in it. I liked it a lot. Kill the general, evade his soldiers, find the assassin, save the country, don't fall in love. It's a good time. Um, it's sort of a bit edgier than this was, I guess. I also wondered about Song of Race and Ruin. Maybe that has a similar dual point of view stuff and maybe to kill a kingdom. I'd grab them, but they're all very far above me. And we don't need to see the pajamas I'm still wearing below the waist, let's not do it. If you're interested in the idea of this scent-based magic uh, and you were thinking about picking this up, I don't think it disappoints, I really don't, particularly book one. Book one is much stronger. Um, I would say if this is something that you're idly pondering about and you're thinking, oh, do I want to pick this up, don't I? Um, there are stronger YA books out there depending on what your interest is in YA. And that's probably all I can say. I'm trying to be very, broad in my thinking because I'm so hyper aware that I'm not in a place to read YA at the moment. I'm just not in that zone and maybe I'll come back to that zone and I'll feel really mean when I reviewed a book being like this was terrible because it was written for teenagers and I'm 26. You know, I'm trying to be broadly thinking about it because I think that's good. I'm trying to put myself in the mindset of 15, 16 year old Judith and would she love this book? And I think she would read it from the library have a good time and then never think about it again. It's that kind of story. Have you read these? What were your thoughts? What are your feelings generally on, uh, especially if you're a book reviewer, reviewing books that you know are not quite your taste anymore, particularly if you did love them in the past? What, where do you stand on re-rating things? I'd be very interested to know. If you're not a book reviewer, tell me what your favourite scent is. I'm very much enjoying um, I bought like a perfume tester kit. I'm enjoying trying them all out. I'm having a good time with it. Thank you so much for watching. While you're down there commenting, you can also subscribe because it makes me feel loved and appreciated. Follow me on all of my social media. Come join us on Discord where we can have nice chats about books. All of that stuff is linked below. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's got a piece of bloopers now. Where can you, you're, you're visible. I mean, this is just, this is just a gray mess. Uh, the first of which is the the crown of smoke no i'm sorry if my microphone is thwacking it's just i'm so excited to talk about smell